am Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm super excited to be able to do this video with Rachel Bassett, who's a certified veterinary technician and a VTS in anesthesia. All right. Today, I wanna to go over our breathing systems. There's a variety out there on the market. Uh, many clinics have a variety in-house as well. Um, something to keep in mind is there's really two different breathing systems, rebreathing and non-rebreathing. So I wanna take a little bit of time to go over the difference between those systems, how they hook up to the machine, and how to perform the leak test on them. I want to first start off with the rebreathing system. A rebreathing system essentially allows our patient to take an inhalation of fresh gas, including oxygen and inhalant, and then exhale waste anesthetic gas, including CO2, which is going to return to our anesthesia machine through our exhalation valve, go into our soda lime canister or CO2 absorber, and a majority of that acid will be neutralized um, from the CO2 and recirculate back into the rebreathing system or the inhalation system for the patient. Um, a good portion of it will also exit the scavenge or the waste anesthetic gas system. And with this um, process, we can also use the APL valve or pop-off valve to provide a manual breath to our patient. Included in this machine, not all machines have this, is a pressure manometer to also identify the inspired pressure that we're giving to our patient manually. The first rebreathing system I have here is called a Y piece. The way you can remember this is this very simple system here at the top, which looks like a Y. What's happening here is this is con connected to our patient and we have two breathing tubes coming off of it. One of them, doesn't matter which, is going to go to our inspiration valve or inhalation valve. And the other one is going to go to our exhalation or exhalation valve. This is going to be hooked up to our patient at their endotracheal tube. Fresh gas and oxygen are going to be delivered through the inspiration tube or inhalation tube up to our patient. They're going to take a breath and exhale and it's going to travel uh, with the flow of the oxygen and the fresh gas is going to push it up our exhalation valve into the flutter valve down into our soda lime canister to be reabsorbed and then into our inspiratory system and back to our patient. To perform a leak test with this system, simply cover the end of the tubing that will be connected to your patient, close your pop-off valve, and apply pressure using your oxygen flush valve to your reservoir bag until you're about 30 plus centimeters of water in your system and watch your manometer for a few seconds to make sure that it's holding pressure. Once you're done and confirm that your system is not leaking, you're gonna open your pop-off valve, let that, that uh, release pressure and waste anesthetic gas go back out your scavenge. Always good practice to squeeze your reservoir bag to flush any residual waste anesthetic gas out as well. And then you're all set up for your rebreathing system, also known in this case as the Y piece. The second rebreathing system we're going to talk about today that's fairly common is the F circuit. F circuit looks a little bit different. It looks like one tube. If you look really closely, there's actually two tubes here. There's a single small tube inside of a larger corrugated tube. In this case, it is important which valve you're hooking up to. Our inspiratory uh, valve is going to be hooked up. It's often labeled, but it's also the uh, tubing that comes off of the main stem hooked up to your patient. We're gonna hook that up to our inspiration valve, and we're gonna hook up the other side to our exhalation valve. With this system, the fresh gas is gonna flow down the center tube or the inside tube all the way to your patient and it's going to exit on the inside here. Your patient's gonna take a breath and when they exhale, their exhale, their waste anesthetic gas is going to flow outside of the green or middle tube in this case, outside along the corrugated tubing. The corrugated tubing is going to return then to the exhalation valve into the soda line and be recycled as such. The reason for setting up an F circuit is that the exhaled gases, the moisture and the heat from our exhaled gases is actually going to warm the inside tube that's providing our fresh gas flow. So this is gonna help maintain a little bit heat and moisture for your patient um, better than the Y piece will. The pressure check is still the same. Occlude the end of your breathing system. Close your pop-off valve. 
apply some pressure using your oxygen flush valve to above 20 centimeters of water. Watch your manometer for any leaks. And then open your pop-off valve and release the pressure from your reservoir bag out your scavenge. Moving on to our second system, the non-rebreathing system. Non-rebreathing allows us to anesthetize patients that are too small to manipulate or move the flutter valves or the unidirectional valves to correctly pass exhaled CO2 and waste anesthetic gas into the rebreathing system. So what the machine has done is removing resistance from the system. So a non-rebreathing system is going to exclude the unidirectional valves, the pop-off valve in this scenario, and the soda line canister. The non-rebreathing system functions solely on a high oxygen flow rate to flush or continually push exhaled gases back to the scavenge because the patient is too small to do so. Patients that utilize a non-rebreathing system are usually less than seven or eight kilograms. Um, anything above that could go on a rebreathing system. What you'll notice with this particular system, this is called an Aries T piece. The Aries T piece has a long supply tube that comes from, and if you'll notice, the end looks similar to the um, common gas outlet on your vaporizer. This is where we're gonna hook up our machine. So we're gonna reach down, remove the common gas outlet tubing from our vaporizer from our rebreathing system and place our non-rebreathing common gas line to there. Your machine might look a little different from this. Common uh, question I have from people is that my common gas outlet does not come off the vaporizer. It comes off another set of tubing or perhaps a manifold on your machine if it's built in, um, for example, into like a, a cart or um, a wheeling uh, apparatus. You will notice at the end of your system that your tube will look a little bit smaller. This adapter will hook up to your uh, common gas outlet in a separate location. You're going to follow that line off of your vaporizer up to your inspiratory valve and you're going to find another valve that looks like this or in some cases it's built right into the front of your machine as a separate attachment. This is where you can hook up your rebreathing system. You're not using the flutter valve, so we're not even gonna be using this system. What's gonna happen is fresh gas, so oxygen and inhalant are gonna come up this tube directly to your patient via this small elbow. It's gonna provide nice fresh oxygen and fresh inhalant right at the point of inhalation. When your patient exhales, um, the high, high gas flow from the high oxygen flow rate is going to push that waste anesthetic gas down this corrugated tubing back to a reservoir bag where we can manually give our patient a breath or beyond through our scavenge system. This scavenge system can be hooked up a couple of ways. It can be hooked up to your passive system, like a charcoal canister, or hooked up to your active system. Just make sure that you're utilizing an atmospheric equalizer so that you're not drawing too much pressure out of your reservoir bag. Where's the pop-off valve, you might ask? On our system here, the Aries T piece, there's a small little slider system here that says closed or open. This allows us to close our pop-off valve and give our patients a breath from the reservoir bag and then open again to release out our scavenge. It's very important when you're anesthetizing a patient that when this system is covered up to make sure that your bag is lying appropriately, not being squished or kinked, and that your pop-off valve is staying open. Um, these are easy to, to get hidden underneath uh, drapes and blankets and uh, towels, so it's important to keep an eye on that. Methods to pressure check their non-rebreathing system, the Aries T piece in this case, is again to cover the end of our breathing system and close our pop-off valve, in this case, this little sliding valve. And we're gonna inflate the system with pressure. We don't have a manometer in this case to identify if there's any leaks occurring. And we are also not able to utilize the oxygen flush valve. So we're gonna use the oxygen flow meter, turn it up to several liters per minute, and wait for your reservoir bag to fill. I like to fill it till it looks fairly stretched and all the creases have disappeared. And then you're gonna go ahead and turn your oxygen off while maintaining pressure on the end of your breathing system. You're going to watch for probably a longer period of time than you would with the rebreathing system for any source or change in your reservoir bag that might um, show a sign of, of a leak. 
Um, as we talked earlier, you may also find it helpful to use a soapy solution like an ultra care or disinfectant or even soapy dishwater to spray over your reservoir bag to identify any bubbles or sources of leaks. Visually inspecting this reservoir bag, I don't see any changes in its size or shape, so I can conclude that it's holding pressure. I'm gonna open my pop-off valve and we're going to allow the waste anesthetic gas to go out our scavenge. The second most, or another common non-rebreathing system is called the BAIN, B-A-I-N, uh, non-rebreathing system. This system is a little bit more advanced. It functions in the same way that Aries T-Piece does by utilizing a high oxygen flow rate. However, it comes with a manometer. So we have this manifold that essentially provides us with a spot to hang our reservoir bag, a spot to hook up our breathing system, a pressure manometer, and a pop-up valve and a scavenge hookup. On this machine, we had an engineer make a little spot to hold that. So you can actually place that on your machine and it's all set up to go. The Bane itself functions very similar to the Aries T-Piece. We have an oxygen and fresh gas supply tubing. And as you'll note, it has the same hookup as our common gas outlet on our vaporizer. So we're gonna reach down, we're gonna hook that up. Again, the fresh gas will flow through this common gas tubing. And in this case, it's gonna flow down the center of our breathing system Inside, there's a small thin tube. That's where our fresh gas will be supplied directly to our patient. At the very end of the breathing system, you'll notice a small outlet where that's gonna be coming directly into the ET tube. On inhalation, the patient will have fresh gas. On exhalation, the fresh gas, because of the high oxygen flow rate, will be forced inside the corrugated tubing out the back. In this case, it's gonna hook up to our anesthesia manifold and into our reservoir bag or out our scavenge system. And in most cases, you can move your scavenge system from your rebreathing system to the back of your Bane manifold. To pressure check, same scenario. We're gonna cover our breathing uh, system's end. We're gonna close our pop-off valve and again, use our oxygen flow meter at several liters per minute to fill our reservoir bag. And in this case, we have a manometer that we can monitor the pressure on. So I'm gonna fill this reservoir bag up um, beyond 20 centimeters of water and hold it for a short time and make sure it's not dropping. Oxygen's off. Pressure manometer's holding steady at 30 centimeters of water. And I'm gonna open my pop-off valve and push that waste anesthetic gas out my scavenge. The common question with these different systems is what are my oxygen flow rates? We've discussed the difference between the rebreathing and non-rebreathing systems, um, but we need to discuss the oxygen flow rates for both. Oxygen flow rates for a rebreathing system are 20 to 30 mils per kg per minute, not less than 500 milliliters or half a liter per minute. Oxygen flow rates for a non-rebreathing system are 200 to 300 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Again, not less than 500 milliliters or half of a, half of a liter per minute to your patient. When setting up for the anesthesia patient, we need to decide what size reservoir bag we're gonna use. They come in lots of different sizes. Your practice has probably a wide variety of them, but what's the right size for your patient? The simple calculation is the tidal volume times six. So patient's tidal volume is 10 to 20 mils per kg. And then we're gonna multiply that value by six, and that's gonna tell you the milliliters uh, for the reservoir bag that you should be using. And whenever you are deciding that, always round up. So for example, a half liter or 500 milliliters. In this case, I have a one liter bag so 1,000 milliliters. On the machine here, I have a two liter bag, so 2,000 milliliters. Thank you so much, Rachel. That was super helpful. So again, if you're nervous about doing anesthesia, great review. When in doubt, go to our YouTube channel for Vet Girl and get some more educational video content there. Thank you again. You're welcome.